Cams are technically very cool creatures. Anybody who has spent any time will tell you that the total mastery of a cam's numerology is deeper than we want to go in a short training session. We have people who make their life's work out of setting the cam's characteristics. But remember, if we're grinding and working on a cam in the old-fashioned way, that is fixed cam timing. We're going beyond fixed cam timing. But we need to understand how the fundamentals operate of why valve timing is changed and understand the advantages of when we do it. Let's talk about some things like lift and timing. Lift is our first discussion. It refers to how far the valve is opened off the valve seat in fractions of an inch or in millimeters. The new terms are in millimeters. This is valve lift here shown on the right in the center picture. It's lifted by the rocker arm here. The gross lift is the cam's actual lobe lift multiplied by the rocker ratio. Let's talk about that rocker ratio in lift. The amount of a cam's position displacement as it rotates up on the, the cam lobe is the l lobe lift of the cam. That's the displacement in millimeters or in inches. The lobe lift is not the same as the amount of lift at the valve, since lobe lift is multiplied by the rocker ratio. And looking, the rocker ratio is created because the push rod or the rocker side is closer to the rocker's pivot than the valve side. You have a longer arm on the right than you do the left. This gives you a pivot, a ratio. The rocker is most factories set is range from 1.5 to 1.75 to 1 ratio. The rockers in most factory operations range from 1.5 to 1 to 1.75, meaning we get more valve lift than we have cam lobe lift. Now, the duration is how long the valve opening lasts. It is given in degrees of crankshaft rotation. Remember, the crankshaft is rotating twice the speed of the camshaft because we're going to get four cycles in 720 degrees of rotation. We'll talk about that later. We have measured this duration from when the cam lobe starts rising from with the lifter and the valve until the same lobe finishes by dropping the lifter back down to the start position and closing the valve. Lift and duration alone can't fully describe an individual cam lobe. Each cylinder has intake and exhaust lobes, and the timing of the events on these lobes, the rising and returning, have a significant influence on engine performance. Neither lift nor duration gives us everything we need to know about the cam design. We need to know one more aspect. We need to know the lobe separation angle. That will finish our definition. The LSA is a measure of how much the intake and exhaust lobes are phased with each other. We're talking about phase angle changes. LSA is in cam degrees. We said earlier, we're going to have some things measured in crank, some things measured in cam degrees. LSA is in cam degrees. Duration of opening is measured in crank degrees. The lobe separation will have a really big impact on performance. The valve timing events have to occur at the most advantageous moments to glean the desired results from the engine. This angle is going to change depending where we want power, we want efficiency, we want mileage. Let's talk about that. We'll talk about some real phase angles. Now, an LSA of zero would be insane because the intake and exhaust valves would open and close at the same time and we would get nowhere. Let's talk about a narrow SLA where there's not much separation. We'll have increased valve overlap, meaning there'll be a, port in, in a portion of time when both the intake and the exhaust are open at the same time. Now, this will give us increased low RPM torque. If we're designing for a low torque, strong engine at low RPM, we'd be looking for a narrow SA. But it would give us a very narrow power band, a reduced idle quality, increased cranking compression, wide load separation angle. It's going to give us reduced valve overlap, improved top end performance, good power, great for NASCAR racers, a wider power band, improved idle quality, reduced crank and compression, and increased the piston to valve clearance. All of these things are done to give us what we're looking for. Now, cam grinders have found that the range for fixed LSA 
is a range of 104 to 115 degrees for most applications. It is chosen for either performance or economy. You can't have both with fixed timing, but we're talking about variable valve timing. Just keep that in mind. The camshaft, the profile, the position, the shape of the cam lobes are designed for optimum performance at certain RPM operating ranges. They have fixed LSAs. There's always a trade-off. Normally, we're going to be limiting low-end torque or high-end power. You can't get both at the same time. But variable camshafts are going to allow us to change the LSA. That's the difference. We're going to change the load Sep lobe separation angle by varying the phasing of the cam. And this is the basis for cam timing. As an example, at high engine speeds, an engine requires large amounts of air. If we need large amounts of air, the intake valves may be closed before the air has flowed in and reducing performance. To fix that, we go to a racing cam. But if the cam keeps the valves open for longer periods of time, as with a racing cam, problems start to occur at the low engine RPM speeds. This will cause unburnt fuel to exit the engine since the valves are still open, causing high HC and an emissions problem. Now, this leads to lower emission performance or increased emissions. Which side do you want? This is the problem with having a fixed cam. We've all heard how something like this Cobra engine on the right idles. It sounds cool, but isn't necessarily good for the average motorist. This is why pure racing engines have difficulty idling at low speeds, which is expected in a family vehicle. Now, obviously, the vehicle on the left does not have to be a family vehicle. But cam timing with a fixed cam chassis is a balance between the following conflicting engine requirements. The key word is conflicting. One, meeting emissions regulations. Two, allowing for good fuel economy. Three, producing acceptable torque and power. And four, maintaining good idle quality. So when we do this, we find that no single cam timing will give optimum results under all the outbreak conditions we may want to make keep. Now this compromise in timing is chosen depending on a specific engine application. Are you looking for performance or economy? What's the difference between a Viper and a Neon? You sure wouldn't have the same kind of economy in the Viper you're trying to get in the Neon. And you're not going to get the kind of performance out of the Neon you're trying to get out of the Viper. They're two different cars, 